Hi, and welcome to the Bookish Stitcher podcast. My name is Jeanette. You can find me on Ravelry, Instagram, and Goodreads as Bookish Stitcher, all in word. I hope you all have had a lovely couple of weeks since I podcasted. Uh, it's been, you know, it's I'm a day later than I normally podcast because my kids had a stomach bug. They're pretty bad early Friday morning, Thursday night around it was like midnight for one of my children, and then the next one was like 3 a.m. and they just got sick and they. One of them bounced back fairly quickly and the other one took a lot lo longer to bounce back. And so we've just been kind of dealing with the cleanup of on all that comes with when you have a really bad stomach bug and you can't always make it to the rest, the bathroom on time. So he's, you know, he's doing better. My daughter was the one that bounced back pretty quickly. I think my son might've had a worse kind of case of it, or maybe he's the one that kind of brought it. But luckily, my husband and I did not get sick. And so that was a very good thing because I was able to take care of the kids and not get sick myself. But I do have a finished object to show you guys this week. And it is my yoked cardigan. It's not mine, it's for my daughter. But it's the yoked cardigan by Hannah Fettig. And we decided to go with the whale buttons because she likes and she thought they were cute and they like had the most contrast. But the yarn that this is knit out of is some Gnome Acres in the Chunky Erin, I believe, and it's the Butter Cow color. And it's just so soft and squishy. I actually used up every single last little bit of the yarn, which I'm so happy about. I just, what I did, kind of strategized, was I went till I divided for the sleeves and I put the sleeves on waist yarn and it called next I think in the pattern to do the sleeves but I decided not to do that. So I just did the body down until it was kind of a couple inches below her waistline and then I did the button band, which is right there. And then I split, I used my scale and I split the remainder of the yarn into two cakes and I just went until there was no more left. And so it hits her about elbow length and it's very cute. And it has most of the ends sewn in, I think, except for one or two, but it has not been blocked yet. It's kind of curling a little bit, but I have no fear that that'll work its way out with the blocking because it is a nice ribbed pattern. It already has a the ability to lie flat pretty well. It's not like stockinette or something like that, but this is a great pattern. It comes from newborn size to, I don't remember the exact adult size, but it goes to adult sizes and you can modify it fairly easily, which is what I did because the actual pattern has the sweater not go as long as I did. It's almost a cropped sweater, but yeah, that is done. And it's great for Texas winter because we don't really get super cold so she can wear this over a long sleeve shirt on the days that it's like in the 50s because it just, it just doesn't get or we haven't this year been lucky enough to have very cold weather. I'm having just some water in a little pottery tumbler that I love. And my co-star I have to show, my Japanese teacher that I have been doing lessons with for a couple years made uh, bags for us, one for my daughter, one for my son, one for me, and then she made a coaster for my husband out of tatami mats. And I'm borrowing the coaster from him just to use this, but I thought it was so cute. And then on to my works in progress. So the thing I probably worked, well, I didn't bring down the two shawls that I've been knitting on because I didn't get to work on them that much. They're getting really big and really heavy. And with my left wrist hurting a lot, I've been trying to take it easy and not knit on those every day and only knit on them after I've given my wrist a break. So I didn't even bring them down because I've only gotten a couple of rows done on them. But this, it's just rapidly outgrowing its bling your string bag. My friend Aaron sent me in a swap. Is my son's Nate hoodie. And last time I hadn't split for the sleeves yet. And this time I have. And this is out of some of my yarn. It's a Titanic colorway. And it's Open Skies yarn. And that's, I've knit a couple like inch and a half past where I divided for the sleeves. So that's what it looks like. 
the largest size that this comes in is a 10 year olds but I'm trying to like just add a couple stitches to size it up because he is 11 but he's a small 11 year old so I would like it to fit him maybe till he's 13 for the next two years so I'm trying to make it a little bit bigger in the body and then a lot longer in the in the length and then a little bit longer in the length of the sleeves as well so I don't have enough of this yarn to do the entire thing in it so I will be using some solid blue for the hood and the sleeves but I'm just going to keep going until I run out on the body. I have one almost full skein, it's kind of falling apart in the bag, and then another full skein to work from. So I'm using uh, some of my Likey Driftwood needles that I got. These aren't the interchangeable set, they're the fixed circulars, but these are some of my favorite wooden needles and I hope to someday own the entire set of the interchangeables because they're just such gorgeous needles. And then, I think the last time I showed this, and this is an Amina Makes bag, I think the last time I showed this, I had just cast on the, the brim. And this is the Dragon Teeth Hat by Knitting Expat Designs. And the yarn that I'm using for this is some Neely's Knits in her Luna colorway, and it's the DK base. And so I've done, I finished the brim, and then I've done a couple repeats of the pattern. And this is just such a fun pattern. It's textured, and I think it looks great with the variegated yarn. And a couple of the rows are intuitive, and then a couple of the rows in the pattern kind of have to pay attention. And I didn't realize how much I've been missing things that I had to, you know, follow the chart with. I, I missed reading charts, so this has just been such a great thing to knit on. And I've been just doing like one repeat a day after I finished the brim and it's great. I am really enjoying this pattern. So that's what it looks like. This is going to be a hat for my daughter and I'm hoping to use up the entire skein. I'm going to go till the hat, you know, gets tall enough and then I'm going to use the remainder for a giant pom-pom on top because I think this is just such a fun colorway. And actually Luna is one of my favorite characters in Harry Potter and my daughter really, she's never re seen Luna in a movie because those are some of the movies that she hasn't seen like the whole Harry Potter series because she's pretty little but she just likes you know when we went to Harry Potter world she liked getting the Luna wand and stuff like that so stuff she saw around there she just thought was fun and she's excited to have a Luna hat so that's the hat that I worked on like I said the two shawls I worked on a little bit the socks that I showed last time maybe a row like I just have not worked on them. They were my socks that I would work on at my daughter's dance because we go there and I would knit on those or my son's dance. And it's so neat because I was knitting there, not last week because last week there was Thanksgiving and I'll talk about that in a little bit, but I was knitting there two weeks ago, I think. But I was knitting on the socks and a woman came up to me and she like grabbed the sock and she like felt it and she was like, can you teach me how to do this? I wanna learn. <laughs> And so one of my other friends, a mom that I've made friends with, who's also super crafty, way more than I am, I would think, like she does it all and she does it all beautifully. And she's hilariously funny and laid back and she's just become, like becoming one of my best friends that randomly met through dance, so she's been wonderful. But this other mom wanted to learn how to knit, so I brought chunky yarn, I brought big needles, and I was like, we're gonna do a hat because I think washcloths can be kind of boring. Scarves are definitely boring, but I found that with hats, especially if you know you teach them to cast on, you can do a two by two purl and rib and help them if they need help with the knitting purling contrast, which can be hard for a beginner. But then once you get past that, they can just learn to knit and just in the round for a hat and then you can teach them decreases. So a hat is fast, especially on size nine needles and chunky yarn, but it also teaches a lot of valuable knitting skills and it's just something that they can use right as soon as they're done and I think it's a great beginner project. It's what I have always taught people. So I brought that and I taught her how to knit and we got into the brim and then I brought along with me, which I didn't bring it down here to show you, but I brought a embroidery pattern that I had gotten. I think I showed it to you guys. I got it in Nashville at the retreat I went to this summer and it's a little bird coming out of a cactus and it has little pink flowers around it. 
and my friend Karina, she is very, like I said, skilled in everything crafty. So I brought that to get her to see if she would help me start it off, know how I should do it, some of the stitches that were involved that I didn't know, and to kind of have an accountability partner with that because I'm great at starting cross stitch or embroider things, and I never finish them, ever. <laughs> It's like several and it was so neat when I first met her I we were talking about cross stitch and I said to her I said do you know frosted pumpkin stitchery and she's like yeah I love them and it was just like finding somebody that you know knew all the fun things that you did and it was just random meeting while your kids are you know doing dance class so it was great but so we've now have the moms, we call it like our craft corner. We all sit down and I'm teaching knitting while Karina's Kar teaching me to do the, you know, back stitch and all these different kinds of like French knots and things like that and making sure that I'm doing them correctly because a lot of times I will get the end result that looks similar to what they've done on the picture, but I went about it the wrong way, right? Because unless you have somebody there to help you, that can often be the case. It's just you're interpreting how to get to the picture versus learning the correct way with somebody there showing you. So that's been wonderful. And it's just been fun having a little like craft time at dance instead of, you know, me sitting there knitting with my earbuds in listening to an audiobook I'm socializing, which is a shock to anyone who would know me that I'm not like hiding out by myself. I'm actually talking to other people, but it's it's fun. And then so those socks have been the dance socks, the whole story for that, but I haven't been to dance because of Thanksgiving and they were closed for that week. So they barely got knit on, but I did start a new project because it has been December and Vlogmas is happening and I wanted to have like special socks and knit those socks just while I watched Vlogmas videos because I just love that style of it's I only watch the shorter ones, but if, if it's like 12 minutes or under, I, I, don't, I just watch anybody and everybody. I think it's just fun. And so I just go through the list and watch every single person who has a Vlogmas that is shorter and knitting or books related or something that I'm interested in. And so the socks that I started to work on for Vlogmas are in a housey yarn bag. My friend Chris did, and this is some Desert Vista Dye Works. And it is in the colorway Father Christmas. And these are going to be for my husband. And I'm actually thinking about doing her club next year. I have a couple skeins of her yarn. And I have a whole bunch of friends that are cajoling me. And they're like trying to talk me into it. So that have done it in the past and loved it. So I, think, I just think it would be fun to kind of be part of that community. So I might try and do it and just do socks. Mostly for my son because he wears his hand knit socks like my husband does and I think that he needs more So I'm gonna probably try to do that and do a lot of socks for other people and maybe a couple for myself, but Father Christmas And of course I had to have it my husband helps and I help it depends if he has time uh, to wind it into I Don't know there's different variations, you know gobstopper ball. I think Susan B. Anderson calls it that but to wind it into a ball so that it's just fun colors coming up. And the four colors in this are a red, a green, a tan, and a blue. So they're kind of Christmas socks, but also they don't feel super Christmassy. And I think my husband will like wearing them and he doesn't have any that is exactly like this. So I finished the toe and I am working up on the rest of it. I should have turned on the air conditioning before I started. It's, it's really getting hot. I think it, I, I don't know how high it's supposed to get up to today, but probably in the 80s, 70s or 80s Fahrenheit. But yeah, so that's the toe. And it's just been so much fun. It feels very festive having my, you know, my behind there behind me, uh, behind me is the, uh, it's a balsam. It's like smells like Christmas trees, like an evergreen kind of candle. And I'll light the candle and I will have my laptop and just take a quick break and watch a Vlogmas and knit on these socks. And so speaking of Vlogmas, I last year said that I was going to do Vlogmas and I thought, oh, you know, when it came time, I thought, you know, I do I want to commit to that? I don't know if you know how it's going to work. And my phone is not, could not take videos at all. I could barely fit an audiobook on my phone. But 
because it was so old, it stopped updating a couple weeks ago. It would not update. There were new like emojis that came out. I couldn't get any of those. I would just get question marks. Some of my apps started to fail. My phone was just not working. And so we went in earlier, a couple days ago, or this weekend, and went in and I talked to them about it. And they were like, well, sometimes when your phone is just ancient, it refuses to update anymore. It's not going to work. And so I got a new phone and the camera on it is hopefully probably really good, which I'm excited about because there'll be higher quality videos. I don't have to borrow my husband's phone and I can maybe play around with editing and stuff. So all that to say, I'm going to be doing Vlogmas. I don't know if it'll be like Vlogmas days one through three. That's probably what the first one will be because it's, you know, it's already in December. But it'll be like a little, I don't know if I'll put one up every day or every couple of days. It'll just kind of be out there. And it will only be on YouTube because I cannot afford to like pay for iTunes for all that extra bandwidth and stuff. So it'll only be on YouTube. I don't know if it'll have ads before it since it'll be a lot more like I'm going to edit in clips and do music and kind of try to really flex that muscle of creating a really high quality video, which is not something... I've done before and not something I even kind of cared to do but now that I have a phone that has those capabilities it's not like the fanciest phone but it is definitely a phone with a good camera and faster processing and you know all those kind of goodies that come along with it. it's not like an iPhone 10 or anything but I have the ability to do more stuff so I'm gonna try I am NOT gonna be the best out there because I I'm never the best at anything but like I'm gonna try really hard and I hope you guys, some of you guys, couple, maybe five friends watch them and enjoy them. So those will be on YouTube, on my channel. And yeah, it's just, it's just gonna be fun. And I'm gonna try to include my kids in it so they can go back and watch it later when they're older. And I just think it'll be fun to kind of chronicle our Christmas season because a lot of people have said this, like it gets really busy part of the year and you kind of forget what you even do in the rush of the day to day. So it'll be wonderful to kind of chronicle that. But yeah, Vlogmas sucks. And actually, at the end of this video, there will be a quick Vlogmas clip, my husband and I wrapping some Christmas presents that we had gotten. And because I didn't know at the time that you have to hold it landscape-wise, I was holding it the wrong way, and so I cut his head off. Go me. <laughs> I'm gonna get better at it as I go, but just know that when I was recording it, his head was completely in the frame and I did not mean to cut his head off so as you're watching. And there's just a body and voices. It's That was not on purpose. <laughs> so that's gonna be at the very end of this. It's just a cute little me showing my wrapping paper, showing some gifts that we got, and just a tiny little clip. So kind of that's what vlog this will be, just different things. It's not all knitting, but I'm really excited because in the format of this podcast, I talk about knitting and books, but as you guys who've watched the podcast for a while know, I absolutely love learning new languages. So I will be in Vlogmas, I have to practice my languages every day. So in Vlogmas, I will be able to kind of take you along with that, show you the tools and resources that I use for learning those. Maybe you guys, if you care to learn any foreign words, you know, they'll be there and I can teach you some just for fun. If you speak, fluently, I feel like you're bilingual in any of these languages that I'm uh, speaking and you know how, like I say something wrong, please correct me. I totally welcome those. I think that's a great way to grow as a language speaker and as a person who has never gotten to travel anywhere outside of this area, it's great to kind of have a native's or a bilingual person's input to grow in my language speaking so all that to say yes there will be all kinds of fun stuff in the vlog and I'm really excited I've been like looking at Christmas music and I think I have kind of a different taste than a lot of people I've seen on vlogmas so hopefully I'll be able to put some of the music that I love in there there will definitely be some Bing Crosby because my boy Bing those blue eyes he's beautiful <laughs> and I love his voice so hopefully that'll be okay to include in my vlogs and then for spinning I have decided by the end of the year I want to apply all of the pre-existing singles that I have spun which is two so I have the one on the wheel and it'll be done it's some October house it's beautiful it's called 
Paris in the afternoon or Paris in the morning. And so that hopefully will be here next time. And because I only have two more podcasts before the end of the year. And yeah, I, I just am really looking forward to hopefully spinning on my wheel more next year because I had all these goals this year. I was looking back on Ravelry over my 2017 goals. I don't know if any of you set goals, but I definitely set goals and I only made one of them. I had like such extensive plans, like sew 10 things and finish three cross stitches and you know, I think knit a sock a week. It was, it was looking back at it now, it was comical how I thought I could do all that, but that was at a time in my life where I had tons of knitting time and I was getting tons of stuff done the previous year, so it just kind of made sense to me that I would be able to continue that on into forever, but that's definitely not how life works. So I'm gonna be later on in this month probably doing a little short bit in the podcast about my goals and how they work, like what they were and what I hope to change for next year because I'm gonna be a lot more realistic next year about my goals and hopefully that will help me achieve them instead of like one out of 10 that I met. And the one that I met was to Vend at a Fiber Festival, which I did. And so the book that I have this week is actually a recommendation from that Fiber Festival. And I forgot to say, um, yeah, there's a podcast group for this. I am sorry I'm not terribly active on there or not active at all. I can't remember the last time I posted anything on Ravelry just because it's probably not going to get better over the Christmas season either. But if you do post there, know that I'm very thankful and I really appreciate you guys watching the podcast even though I know that it's, you know, I'm not as <laughs> regular as I used to be about always posting on Sunday once a week just because my life has gotten you know, to where that's not feasible for me anymore. But the book this week is one that was recommended to me when I was vending at the Fiber Festival. I was asking everybody that came into the booth to tell me their favorite book because I got a whole bunch of book recommendations from this. And I just love, I think you can tell so much about a person by learning their favorite books, especially if you've read them, you can connect with them on another level. And I think books just have this quality. When you love a book, it's kind of like your baby. I know I've uh, had some books that I loved and recommended them to friends and then they haven't loved them and you're like, oh, you didn't love my baby. So it's kind of funny. But this book I had heard of because some of my friends from college, this is also one of their favorite books. And I think they actually gave me a copy of this book years and years ago. And we're like, you need to read this. It's great. And I hadn't read it. And it was just sitting on my shelf, so I think I gave it to Goodwill or to the library for their book, the library bookstore. But then years later, at this festival, somebody said that this was their favorite book. And it's weird how when one person explains it, it can sound not interesting at all, and then when another person explains it, it sounds brilliant and it makes you interested in it. So this person explained to me, it was like, it's not like your standard fantasy, it's very different. And that just kind of made me want to read it. And I was doing a readathon, like a reading challenge thing, and I was doing this as a buddy read with a bunch of people, so that kind of helped me to read it as well. And the book is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. And so this is a very long book. It's over 600 pages. I listened to the audiobook. But the interesting thing is there's this man that owns a bar and a person who is kind of a, they call him chronicler, he comes in and comes to the inn or the bar and meets the bartender and finds out that he is a kind of legendary figure in the world. <laughs> and so they call him the bloodless, like Cloth the Bloodless. And so he, the guy chronicler is like, can you tell me your story? And he agrees to, he's like, do you have a couple days? And so he sits down. And so the story alternates between present day stuff happening and then going back in the past and telling this boy's entire story from how he grew up, kind of from a family of performers. It's a terrible thing that happened to his troupe. And then where he went on from there and how he ended up at a university and studying and became who he was. 
and it of course has magic and it's the name of the wind and it kind of has this very interesting take on once you know something's name you can harness the power to use that object for what you want so if you know the name of uh, fire and there's a fire in a house you can control the fire and tell it to put itself out and so I was just very interesting principal and I completely enjoyed it and the audiobook was good so if you like fantasy and you if you like either if you like fantasy or if you don't like the traditional fantasy where it's like dragons and swords and you know going on epic quests like like the Lord of the Rings which I love but this is more a human like emotions there's not really a a giant foe to defeat there's no Mordor there they don't have to go and take a ring back to the fires of Mount Doom and stuff it's just kind of more personalities and like a almost a contemporary fantasy in a way that is just dealing with more human emotions and human relationships there's the word I was searching for human relationships versus high fantasy things even though it does have magic so I don't know I think that might be something that a lot of people would enjoy and it is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss but just as a warning to you guys this is a trilogy I almost even hesitate to say that because I don't remember the year this book was written 2006 2007 and then like two years later he put out the second one in the trilogy and then it says like Maybe it was three years later, but I think it was 2007 and then maybe 2011, but the third one in the trilogy has not come out. And there was the funniest thing on Goodreads about it. The author, people were rating the third trilogy. I guess it has a name, the third book, I guess has a name, but people were going on there and giving it a rating even though it doesn't exist. And so Patrick Rothfuss wrote this review saying like, time travelers must really like my book because people must have come back from the future that have read it and are rating it now on Goodreads and he's like thank you and can you send me if there's an e-copy of it can you send it to me because he's like the book that I currently have that I'm working on is about a 3.5 stars and I would really love a five star copy of this novel so it's a lot longer than that but it's it just really shows his humor and his writing style so I, I quite enjoyed that but if you're the kind of person who would drive you bonkers that you might never get to finish a trilogy, then don't start this probably. It, I am almost that person, but I've just, I know it going in and I've just decided, okay, sera, sera, whatever it will be will be. And if I don't get to ever read the third one, because I can definitely understand that pressure of you put something out there and you thought it would just be okay, it was some little book, maybe a couple people would read it and it gets cult following and then it freaks you out and then you kind of backpedal and you're like, I can't put out this third one because what if it ruins the whole thing? And what if people don't like it? And just that, that fear of that you're an imposter, which is a very, I had that often in my life where I do something and if people like it, like even when I started the podcast, I thought a couple people would watch it. And then when a lot of people started watching it, I got very nervous and I kind of, went on a knitting slump and kind of uh, stabbed myself in the foot with it. So I was just like, I have, I completely understand where he is with that. So if he never finishes it, I'm okay. I know the whole being terrified that people think that you're awesome and you're not. Because, yeah. So, Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss is the book. And like I said, there will be a short vlogmas clip at the end of this of my husband and I wrapping presents and if you would like to watch my vlogmas on YouTube then that would be wonderful and I hope you enjoy it and I'm going to work really hard to try to make it awesome as I possibly can so that's everything I have for this time and until next time I hope you have a wonderful couple weeks and you get to do all the things you love okay bye everyone it's vlogmas you want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> so we went Christmas shopping today and we're going to wrap some of the stuff that we got. And yeah, I'm hoping to do blog Vlogmas. This is on my husband's phone. Hopefully I'll have 
It's one that I can do it on. So yeah, he is right now wrapping. We kind of might be Harry Potter fans. Do you show him what it is? <laughs> a bit, a bit. Can you show um, him the front? Yeah, definitely. I just mark my cutting spot. We got some Trivial Pursuit. This is a game for uh, my brother's fiance's son. We found out he loves Harry Potter like us, so we're really excited. And I might have a wrapping paper problem. Well, no, it's not a problem. It's actually really good because I love variety. It's a wonderful fetish. You can tell which one is mine. Matryoshka's. There's actually another Matryoshka one too. So yeah, it's <laughs> whenever I see it, it's like a compulsion. And there's some more Christmas presents in a box that I don't know if it will work. It's kind of shoved in there. It's another present for the same person who's getting this. They got like two. And then this beast of a game is Hogwarts Battle uh, that we might. It's kind of like a joint present for my husband and my son. So these are already wrapped presents. This is some tea, coffee, uh, Lego set for my son. This I just bought for my husband today at Barnes and Nobles, and I had them wrap it there. There was a uh, little girls' soccer team that was taking donations for everything they wrapped. So. I let them wrap it and gave them some money. And it was really cool too at Barnes and Nobles today. They had a thing where all the proceeds, if you use this flyer, went to a girl's choir or maybe it was a girl and boys choir. But so yeah, you're able to donate to two things and they have a, uh, here a bird in the back. They have a donate, a book thing. And so I donated a book called Serafina, which is a fantasy. I haven't read, but it's about a girl who saves the world. So how can you go wrong there with empowering young girls to save the world and then another present for my dad's wife's daughter I guess my stepsister and then there's all kinds of stuff there and I'll show you a couple other things that I got for I'm in pajamas he's not because he's he's also even can you like tilt forward and show your hat he's wearing a Hat that I knit out of Brooklyn Tweed, Tweed Loft, and yeah. I switched to this hat at the first cold snap. <laughs> Never take it off. So I got these for my daughter. I love Kate DeMille, De Camello. Camillo, she is a great writer. But it's just a set of three because my daughter's starting to read Bob books, and these are a little more complicated. So I thought that these would be great for her. They have pictures and it's basically a pig that is just hilarious and adorable I think she will love it so that is Melakaliki Maka or it looks like I love Bing Crosby <laughs> some Bing Crosby Christmas music in the back and then as you do when you're a knitter or a reader or whatever, you know, you find something in the shop and then you say to your husband, this is a Christmas present for me. <laughs> so I got, I found some graphic novels that just look really intriguing. This is Imagine Wanting Only This. And I just love that title. So it's beautiful. There's lots of cool stuff in there. And then I've heard really good things. There's a group on Ravelry called Stitchers, I think. And they're actually reading this as part of their November read, or they were reading this as part of their November read. I didn't get around to it, but I bought this because I think it will be beautiful. And so that would be another Christmas present for me. And that I think is gonna be a Christmas present for the person who's wrapping right now. I'll wrap that for him so he doesn't have to wrap his own present. But I have to give him mad props because he is an engineer and you can tell that in his wrapping skills because everything that he wraps is just precise. Do you want to say goodbye? Bye. Okay, so I will see you for more vlogmas. It's kind of a start and I'll be doing other things. So bye guys.